Bible, open up, if you would, to the book of First Peter tonight, First Peter, and we're going to continue our study. I do want to encourage you to join with us this coming uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock for Easter services, Easter Sunday, and we're going to have a great time, a great service on Sunday, looking forward to seeing what God's going to do, and I want to encourage you to, to be here and to uh, uh, to uh, to be here online, that is, and uh, and also to um, uh, to invite someone to watch it with you. And uh, the gospel will be preached. And this is a window of Easter is always a window of opportunity. Easter and Christmas both are. Uh, people who don't normally come to church any other time will come. Uh, they'll come at Easter, and they'll come uh, they'll come at Christmas. And uh, to uh, because of course you can't go to heaven if you don't go to church on those two Sundays, and uh, and so that that's the, the thinking in the world. And but that's a great thing because they do come to church, and then when they come, they're able to hear the word and able to be saved and give their life to Christ. And so we want to take advantage of that opportunity. So there are people who are going to be looking to be sure to watch some service online. And so you tell your friends and your family to go to freedomsa.org, click on live stream, 11 o'clock central time uh, on uh, t uh, Sunday morning, and I think they're going to be greatly blessed. So you got your Bible, First Peter, and uh, my headset went down, so I'm, I'm uh, on this microphone, so i got to kind of work with this thing here tonight and hopefully have the headset back up for Sunday. Um, but let me just say it's good to be with the church family tonight. And uh, I'm excited about what the Lord has for us in his word. I'm trying to finish up First Peter so when we come back together and we begin to assemble in this place and we don't do air, air fist bumps and elbow airs and all that other stuff, we, we give full-fledged hugs, all right? And uh, when we get back to that, I'm, I'm wanting to begin a new study, and so I want to uh, have First Peter uh, finished because we started it. And something about me, I, when I start something, I always like to finish it. And uh, so we're, we've got, I think, two uh, more messages, uh, this one and one more, maybe a third one, and, um, and that, that'll be it. But we saw last week, what we saw last week was that uh, shepherds, we talked about shepherds, elders, shepherds, pastors, uh, all of these are the same term. We saw that shepherds, uh, that whether you're a shepherd, whether you're a shepherd uh, pastor of a church or of a life group, or you're, God's enabled you to be a shepherd of a family, you have a wife, you have some children, God has put you as an employer and given you employees, God has uh, put you in a classroom and given you students, but in some way God has given you a flock. We saw that the shepherd is to serve the flock. That's what the shepherd is to do. The shepherd's not there, to, the flock is not, the flock belongs to the Lord. It's a, a stewardship from God, and we're not to try to see what we can get out of the people or what they can do for us. Uh, we're not to do it grudgingly, nor of necessity. We're not to do it for, uh, by constraint. First uh, Peter, Peter says in First Peter 5, they're with their arm twisted behind our back. And uh, we're not to do it for money or for anything we can get out of the people, but we're to do it as unto the Lord. We're to love the people, do it cheerfully, willfully. We're to lay down our life like the Lord Jesus. He's the good shepherd. We never throw sheep away. When a sheep gets lost, we go out after the sheep. We don't say, well, we got 99 more. Who cares about that one? No, the shepherd's heart is to care about every member of the flock that God has entrusted you with, to go out and to care for them, to love them, and uh, to serve them. And we're to serve them, the Bible says, with a ready mind. That's a ready heart, ready to serve them, and not to be served, but to serve. That's what the shep shepherding is about. Now, in order to do that, you have to have, you have to have possess a virtue that's called humility. You have to have humility. And that's what we're going to look at tonight, this word humility. Humility, very important word in the Bible. Humility, when Peter wrote this here about humility, we're going to read this passage in a moment. When Peter wrote this here, humility was not in the Greek vocabulary. You can read Greek literature, you can go in Greek history, and you'll not find the word humility anywhere. It was not part of the Greek culture. Uh, and, uh, and, and that was the culture, of course, that Christ and, and, the, and the Bible was written in. And they, the, uh, the Jewish people, they spoke Koine Greek, and they were under Roman occupation. And in the Roman, the Roman culture, humility was a sign of weakness. If you were humble, you were weak. If you were humble, you were stupid. If you were humble, you were a chump, all right? 
And uh, there was humility was not a virtue to be sought after. Matter of fact, you know, if you, it's only the strong survive, and you, you don't let anybody, you don't serve anybody. You, uh, uh, you uh, people serve you. You conquer people. You don't, you don't submit, put yourself under anybody. No, you rule, you reign. Go, girl, go, whatever, all right? Don't let nobody tell you what to do, all right? And uh, so th this was the attitude. And humility, humble, that's weak, that's sick, that's, uh, that's stupid, and uh, what's wrong with you? But the Lord Jesus, when Jesus came, he was the one who introduced humility as a virtue. And a uh, matter of fact, in, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 11, and uh, Rob, these will be a little bit out of order, but he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Look what he says. And then the next verse, he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I, he says, I am meek. I'm meek. That's low. And I am lowly in heart. That's humble. The same word we get our word humble from. I'm low. I'm humble. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, he says, and my burden is light. But Jesus came and he modeled humility. He was the humble Savior, the lowly Savior, the Savior who served the people, the Savior, the leader who served others. And so th this, uh, this, this is what Jesus taught. Uh, Je this is what Jesus modeled. This is what the apostles, the writers picked up. Peter talks about being humble. James talks about being humble. You find it in the writings uh, in the scripture. The apostle Paul talks about it, uh, about the lowliness. Uh, Paul tells Timothy, a requirement for ministers. You're going to be a minister. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but they have to have, they have, to have a humble mind. They have to be a humble servant and uh, instructing people who oppose themselves. But you've got to have a spirit of humility. Uh, spirit of pride doesn't work in ministry. You because you get you wear your feelings on your sleeve and you're going to get offended. No, you've got to be a humble person. You've got to go low. And, uh, and so this is something that was no doubt a premium uh, in, uh, teaching in the, in the disciples among, in the Bible. And, uh, and so now Peter talks about it. And so well, let's pick up our scripture here in 1 Peter chapter 5. And uh, he says in verse number 5 then, in the context of uh, before he's shepherds, you have to serve. Now you have to be humble to serve the flock. Likewise, he says, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Now, who's he talking about? We're just going to look at three verses tonight. But he says, ye younger. Uh, it could be he's talking about the younger people in the congregation submitting to the older people in the congregation. And uh, that, that, that's, that is a good thing because you're showing respect for the elders, for those that are older. That's, that is always a good practice. Probably in context here, he's talking about not so much age as he's talking about position in the congregation because he's just spoken to the elders and told them to be servants. And now he's saying to the younger, the younger in position, rank, or whatever, the elder, he says, he says, submit yourselves unto the elder, the elder being in the senior position. He said, in other words, he's recognizing that there is authority in the church. And when you have a humble spirit, you do submit to the authority that God has placed over you, whether it be in the church, whether it be in the home, whether it be in the workplace. You, you submit, you put yourself under the authority that God has placed over you. He says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Well, whether it's the older people in the church or whether it's the, the senior saints in the church or whether it's the pastor or whatever, he clears it all up here. He says, yea or yes. He says, all of you, all right, all of you, no matter who you are, all right, he says, this is the spirit that you got to have. He says, be, he says, all of you be subject, be in submission one to another. He says, be in submission one to another. In all of your dealings with each other, he says, be subject, be in submission one to another. And look what he says, and be clothed with humility. Put on the garment of humility. Can you imagine the writers, I mean, the readers getting that, be clothed with what? Humility? That doesn't even fit in, a, in, in that culture that they were in. But Peter says, no, you need to be clothed with humility. And here's the reason why. He says, because God resisteth the proud. We learned something about God here. He resists the proud, but he gives what? Grace to the humble. He gives grace to those who go low. He gives grace to those who submit, surrender. He gives grace to, the, to those who put the other guy first. He gives grace to those who look out, who put the other person above themselves. It says, God resisteth the proud. That's an interesting word. The word resister means to set himself 
against like an army against you. God opposes. He absolutely resisteth the proud. God hates pride. And that's what caused, that's what got the devil in trouble. He got full of pride, got cast out of heaven is what caused the fall of man was pride. Pride go up before destruction. Pride reminds the Lord of, of, of all of the evil that's in this world. And God hates pride. And so he resists the proud. When a person gets proud, I'm going to do it my way. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not serving nobody. I'm not going to obey God. I know better. Then, then God sets himself he doesn't just ignore him. He actually resists him. He comes, he sets himself against that person. But it says, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the one who goes low. And grace, what is grace? So yes, grace is, uh, is the unmerited favor of God. But grace is, is, is so much more than just that definition. It's, it's favor. It's God's help. It's God helping you do what you can't do yourself. It, it's God coming to your rescue. And when a person goes low, God comes to their rescue. When a person uh, is humble, God, it, grace, listen, when a person is humble, it is a magnet. It draws God. God is drawn to the humble. God is repelled by pride. A person gets proud, God distances himself. And then he resists them. He opposes them. He comes against them. But in, in a negative way. But when a person humbles himself, it is a magnet that draws the Lord. God is drawn like a magnet. He is drawn to the humble person all right so i don't know about you but i want to i want to for god to look and to see me humble how many of y'all want god to see you humble out there in the in the uh virtual world wave at me all right oh i see oh i see you i see you i see you thank you all right uh but look what he says he says be ye clothed with humility put on the garment of humility now earlier first uh, in, in first peter chapter three in a previous uh chapter there uh, Paul said that the, that the holy women of old, that they clothed themselves, they adorned themselves in a, in a meek and a quiet and a humble and a quiet spirit, in a humble spirit. That was the clothing. He says, don't let your clothing be the outward uh, uh, the adorning of the putting on of apparel. Don't let it be. Don't, don't let yourself be all about your clothes and your jewelry and all of that. He says, no, the beauty that is precious in the sight of God is the clothing of a meek and a quiet uh, a quiet spirit, a humble spirit. That's what is attractive to God. And so God looks at us, and God's not looking at your threads tonight. Man, those are some fine threads the pastor's got on tonight, all right? No, God's looking at, is he wearing a garment of humility, or is he wearing a garment of pride? And that's what God looks for. And God says, if he's wearing a garment of humility, I am coming to his rescue. I am, I am going to work on his behalf. I'm going to come. I'm going to be like I'm going to be like me and Joseph. I was with Joseph and blessed everything that he did. I was drawn to Joseph. I'm going to be like my servant Moses, the meek man. I was with Moses and, and blessed Moses and helped Moses. I'm going to be drawn to that. And look, if I got to have make my if I got to make a choice between God's help or me doing it myself, I want God's help. Amen. God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. So let me just give you three things we see in the scripture here about the garment of humility. If a person is wearing the garment of humility, then three things will be evident. Number one, they will serve others. That's the first thing. And that's what we see in the text here. He says, he says in verse number, go back to verse number, uh, uh, verse number set five. He says, likewise, the younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Be subject, serve one another. Um, when a person is humble, then they will be a servant. And we ne and that they will serve. You will put yourself under. No, people are going to serve me. No, you put yourself under. It's not what can you do for me, but what can I do for you? When a person has a humble spirit, they have a servant's heart. The uh, uh, the garment, the servant's garment is humility. Servants wear the garment of humility. Humble people are always servants. They're always. There's no such thing as a person is humble but they're not a servant. No, if you're humble, you're going to be a servant. And that what that means is you put others before yourself. You serve other people. Um, you don't, it's not, it's not, let me tell you about my burden. No, it's, can I, can I know about your burden? What, what, what are you going through, my brother? What is your, what is on your heart? All right. Not, not that you never share a burden, but you're concerned about them. People who are not humble, all they are is they're into themselves. They're all into themselves. Me, myself, and I, that's the whole world. But people are, who are humble, they're into you. They're concerned about your burden, what you're going through. Your people are not humble. Listen, you, you, you know, you, you try to tell them something. Hey, could I share this with you? Uh, something about yourself. They'll listen and then th they'll get tired, you know, five seconds into it. And they'll cut you off and go right back to themselves. Me, myself and I. 
We all know people like that. They're just all into themselves. But humble people, no, they genuinely are concerned about other people and they love other people and they serve other people. We, this is never seen any clearer than in the life of Jesus. Jesus, he had the disciples. He was the leader of the disciples. But you know that famous scene in John 13, he, he finishes the supper. And then after he finishes the supper, the Bible says that he, he, takes, and he, he, he takes off his outer garment and he gets a towel and he girds himself. Now, all I have is this, is this baby cloth from the church nursery, all right? But it'll serve the purpose. He takes, he takes, the, he takes, the, uh, he, he takes off his outer garment. I'm going to leave mine on. And, uh, and then he girds himself. And then the Bible says that he got down and he washed the disciples' feet. He washed, I mean, he washed the 12 disciples' feet, including Judas's feet. And he washed their feet, and he dried them with the cloth. He served them. This is what servants do. Servants wash the feet of the masters. But here you have the master, the Lord, washing the feet of the disciples. And then Jesus says this in John chapter 13. Look what he says after he finishes. See these verses, John 13, if you can give that to me. It says, for after he had washed their feet and had, t and had taken his garments and was set down again, he washed their feet, put his garments back on, he sat down. He said unto them, know you what I've done to you? Keep that rolling if you would. You call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. Can you say example? An example. He said, I've showed you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Now, he already told the, told the pastors earlier to be an example to the flock. And now Jesus is letting all of us know we're all to be an example. He says, for verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. And so if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. So the Lord set an example. He said, look. I washed your feet. I'm the Lord. I'm God. And I am here. You think about that. The God of the universe, the God who created everything when there was nothing, he spoke it into existence. Put the sun, the moon, the stars, made everything. And that God who spoke when there was nothing, everything into existence, became a man, became a baby, born of her. And then, and then he got down on his hands and knees and he washed his disciples' feet. God washed. Now, do you understand when we get humble ourselves and we wash our uh, brother's feet? And I mean, when I mean to, by that, we serve one another. You understand how that draws God? That's like God. God did that. He did that. And God is attracted. He's drawn to that. You're like me. You're, you're humble. Jesus was humble. And he says, you're acting in humility. I like that. I'm drawn to that. No, no, no. Uh, you washed my feet. Anybody, I'm not washing anybody's feet. I'm not serving anybody. No, 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 no one's going to use me. I like what Brother V said a couple of weeks back, a couple of months back in Bible study. He said, hey, if you want God to use you, then you're going to have to, uh, don't ask God to use you unless you're willing for people to use you, to, or to, for, unless you're willing for people to take advantage of you. I'm not letting nobody take advantage of me. Then don't pray and ask God to use you, <laughs> because if you, if you want God to use you, people are going to take advantage of you, all right? That's what it's called serving other people, all right? But guess what? It gets God's attention. Philippians chapter 2, we see the humility of the Savior again. And this is such a powerful. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is the mindset we're to have. Who being in the form of God, he thought it not robber to be equal with God, because he was God. But look what it says. But he made himself of no reputation. He didn't hold, hang on to his rights. And he took upon him the form of a servant. And he was made in the likeness of men. When Jesus left heaven and came to the earth, as a man, we have no idea how low he went. I mean, that was lowering himself. That was going low. God becoming a man. I mean, that, we have no idea what he left and gave up to come here. And it says that he, and then in being found in fashion as a man, he went even lower. He humbled himself as a man. He humbled himself to leave heaven and come to the earth. And then when he came to the earth, he humbled himself even more and he became obedient unto death, even the death. You know, the, 
uh, criminals were nailed to crosses because of crimes. Jesus was nailed to a cross not because of the crimes he committed, but he was nailed for the crimes we committed. He humbled himself and became obe- unto death, even the death of the cross. But look at the, t- look at the, the top side of it. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. All right, so the garment of humility. When God looks out and God says, I want to bless someone. I want to, I want to pour out my blessings on somebody. But it's going to be a humble person. God looks for servants. God looks for people who are serving others. God looks for people who, hey, I'll serve. I'll volunteer. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be, look, you don't, it's not about me. It's about you. How can I help? How can I be a blessing? God looks for servants. Secondly, let me say this here. Not only, not only are humble people servants, but secondly... Humble people wait on God's timing. They wait on God's timing. Now, look, if you would, at this next verse, verse number, verse number six. He says, humble yourselves. Now, that's a transaction. That's something you have to do yourself. Uh, He says, this is something we have to do. If you're going to be a servant, if you're going to obey God and be a servant, it's going to be an act of your will. Nobody can make you do that. He says, humble yourselves. You humble yourself. Look what he says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, under the authority of God. Put yourself under God's authority. Hum- look, look, obey God and serve others. This is, what, this, is, this is the context. Obey God and serve other people. This is what Jesus did. He became obedient. He obeyed God. And what did he do? He served others. He served all humanity by going to the cross. He served others by laying down his life. He became a servant, all right? So obey God. God, I'm under your authority. I'm, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to do what you're telling me to do. I'm going to obey your word because I'm not proud. I don't know better. I'm not going to say I know what, you're, what you want me to do, but I'm not doing that. I know better. I'm going to live my own life. That's rebellion. God, resist the proud. But I'm going to obey you. I'm going to come under your hand, under your authority. I'm going to obey your word, and I'm going to live a life of service to other people. I'm not going to worry about what they can do for me. I'm just going to serve others. I'm going to die to self, live for other people, serve others. And look what it says here. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he, that God may exalt you, may lift you up in due time or just the right time. God knows exactly when to lift you up. You're not worried about the lifting up. You're not focusing on the lifting up. You're focusing on the obedience and the serving of other people. And there's a principle here. He says, If you'll do that, God will lift you up. The principle is is if you go high, then God's going to bring you low. But if you go low, then God's going to bring you up. That's a divine principle there. You see it all through the Scripture. Proverbs talks about it. Honor, humility uh, uh, comes before honor. We have to humble ourselves. And then God lifts us up and God honors that. What did he say about to to Saul? He said, Saul, when thou was little in your own eyes, that's when I made you king, when you were going low when you were just obedient servant and would just do what I asked you to do you were humble that's when I chose you and made you king but now that you got the big head now I got to bring you now I got to bring because now that you've gone high if you stayed low then I could have left you on the throne but now that you've gone high I got to take you off the throne that's right pride go before destruction haughty spirit before fall and uh, so there's a principle here but but the principle is is that is that the humble person serves others and the humble person waits on God's time and the humble person waits on the Lord, lets the Lord lift them up in his time. And I'm not focusing on being lifted up. I'm letting God listen. The, the humble person says, Lord, I'm just going to I'm just going to obey you. and I'm going to serve others and I'll let you take care of the promotion when, when I'm supposed to get promoted. That's what King David did. Uh, King David just said, he, listen, you follow the life of King David. He was a better he was a better uh, servant. He was a better person. He was better all the way around, smarter, better warrior, everything than King Saul. Uh, King Saul was inferior to him. And David had opportunity to knock him off and take the throne. But he said, no, I'm going to wait on God's timing. I'll let God put me on the throne. I'm not going to get to the throne any other way. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tear. As a matter of fact, he supported King Saul. He backs King Saul up and he waited. And guess what? At just the right time. God knows the right time to lift you up. There was things that God needed to work out in David's life. And God was working things out. And at just the right time, God lifted him up. But you know what the proud person says? I I deserve to be in a better place. I deserve. The proud person doesn't trust God God that God is watching out for them. 
that God has your best in mind. But we humble ourselves and say, Lord, I'm just going to obey you. I'm not going to serve, serve other people. Quit worrying about getting promoted. Quit worrying about getting lifted up. I'm just going to serve other people and leave that in the hands of God. And at just the right time, the Lord will lift you up. You know, the devil's always trying to offer shortcuts. He came to the Lord Jesus and said, look, if you will bow down right now, I will, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, if you'll bow down, I'll give you all these kingdoms. I'll let, you have, I'll let you be the rule of the whole world under me, of course, all right? I'll let you be the rule of the world. And Jesus said, no, 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 I'm not going to bow down and worship you. Worship the Lord God. Him only shalt thou serve. He said, I'm, I'll wait on God's timing. The Lord already told him, told him to sit here at my right hand to, to, to make all your enemies your footstool. Hebrews chapter 2 says, that everything has been put under the feet of Jesus, but we don't see everything right now under the feet of Jesus. But when you get to Revelation chapter 13, the Bible says the kingdoms of, of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord the, and the kingdoms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'll wait on God. I'm going to get, I'm going to rule over the whole world visibly, physically, and I'll wait on God's timing. And it'll be just the right time. You know, That takes care of retaliation. People do you wrong. The flesh says, get them, punch them. No, Jesus says, no. Uh, he re was reviled. He reviled not again. He committed himself. I'll let God take care of that. I don't have to fight my own battles. God will lift me up when it's the right time. It takes care of so many things. It takes care of, a lot of people get into debt. They're in debt. Why? Because they don't want to wait on God's timing. I can't wait. I got to have it now. I know, and you got to have that interest rate now too, all right? And you got to have it, and then, and then, you know, six months later, they come with the trucks, and they carry it off, and now you don't have to have it, all right? The only thing you got left is the bill, and you don't have the car or the big screen TV anymore or the furniture. Yeah, just got to have it. Got to have it now. Can't wait. And, uh, boy, this takes care of so much, all right? Humble people are willing to wait on God's timing, willing to wait on the timing of the Lord, and God always gives them his best. He resists the proud, but a person who is humble, who will wait on the Lord, God, that's the, so when God looks down, God looks down and sees, he looks, at, he looks for that garment of humility, and he says, are you a servant? I'm looking for servants, people who will serve others. I'm looking for people who will wait on God's, wait, wait, on, wait on my time, and who will let me lift them up at just the right time. Recognition. You know, it's amazing how people just strive for recognition. They just want to be recognized so bad, and, uh, I read this here, uh, Matthew, chapter numbers, Matthew chapter 6. Look at this here. He says, when you do your alms, when you do your good deeds, Matthew chapter 6, look at this verse. Take heed that you do not your alms. Now, alms are uh, gifts for the poor, and also there's alms deeds, good deeds to the, that you do for people. It's just good things you do. It's serving other people is what it is. He says, when you do your alms, when you serve other people, don't do it. To be seen of them, all right? To be seen of men. Don't do it so people can see you. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Now, when you serve other people, people will see you do it. But don't let that be your motive. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Don't do it and then blow a trumpet so everybody has to see. Look what they're doing. Look, look how they're sacrificing. Look at the good deeds they're doing. Oh, oh, oh. Look at them, look at them. Don't tell everybody about it. Just do it and get over it. Just serve, be a blessing, and get over it. Don't make, don't make a big deal about it, all right? Don't go on Facebook and tell everybody, all right? Take pictures and, and so, all right? Just do it. Do good, serve others, and get over it, and don't make a big deal about it. He says, he says because if you do it for that, then you're doing it because you're looking for someone to compliment you. You're looking for someone to give you an attaboy, all right, or whatever, and he said, I say unto you, you have your reward. You already got it. That's what you wanted. All right? But look what he says. He says, just do your deeds. Do your alms. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand doeth. Continue on. In other words, do it in secret. That, that alms may be in secret, and the Father would see if in secret himself shall do what? Reward thee openly. A humble person. A humble person just goes about doing good, serving others, obeying God, and waiting on God's time and letting God discover them, letting God recognize them, letting God lift them up, letting God promote them, letting God and willing to wait on the Lord's timing in every area. How many people have married the wrong woman?
because they were not willing to wait on the Lord. Got to wait on God. Wait on God's timing, all right? Pastor, I got to have her. And then six months, Pastor, I can't. How do I get rid of her? You stuck now, son. You got her, all right? Should have waited on the Lord. Yeah, wait on God. Wait on God's timing, all right? Don't make a big deal about it. If you do something, don't make a big deal about it. I remind you of that pastor who, uh, who is the congregation. They gave him a, a medal. And uh, they gave him a gold pen. And, and because he was such a humble pastor, they gave him a gold pen. And uh, that said, most humblest pastor in the world. They awarded it to him. They gave it to him. And the next Sunday, he wore it on his suit. So they took it away from him. All right. Anyway, all right. You're not... You're, you're, li- you're not listening. Okay, here we go, all right? Now, let's continue on. Let's, let's finish it. Number one, hum- the garment of humility. When, you, when a person, God's looking for the humble. God is drawn to the humble. Are your servant. I'm looking for servants. I'm looking for people who will wait on me, not run ahead of me, who are willing to wait on my, who trust me. That's faith. You've got to wait on God's timing. Faith and humility are, are, are you cannot separate them. People who have who are humble, have faith. They trust God. They believe that God has their best in mind, and they're willing to wait on the Lord, and they're willing to serve others. Now, Peter knew the audience, because here's the thought. I told you that the Greek culture, the word humility, nowhere found. And so here, Peter said, you know, here, these readers are reading this, and they hear, you know, okay, serve others, live for others, lay down your life for others, don't make it all about you. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, pray for others, minister to others, forget about yourself. And, and I can you know, hear them saying, well, well, if I do all of that, who's going to take care of me? Peter knew that. So look what he says. Last verse, verse 7. He says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The Lord's going to take care of you. When you, take, when you put God first, you serve him, and you live a life of serving others, that's humility. And you're willing to wait on the Lord. That's humility. Guess what? Then God's, God is going to be the one that takes care of you. The Lord's going to take care of you. God takes care of the humble. And so the, la- the la- last thing I see here, verse number 7, he says, cast on all your care. That's your anxiety. Humble people give their anxiety. They give their worry to the Lord. They give it to God. Proud people say, no, I can handle this. I'm okay, I'm good, I can handle this. But humble people say, no, I can't make it without God. I can't handle this. I can't go on. I need the Lord's help. Humble people always pray. You'll not find, you'll not find proud people don't pray because that's the exact opposite. I can do this. Prayer says, I can't do this. Pride says, I can do this. Humility says, I can't do this. That's why, we, we, like in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. The scripture says, uh, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. And what's the first thing? And pray. When you, if we're humble, we're going to pray. The, the garment of humility. When God looks down, does God see a prayerful person, someone who prays, who spends time with them? Or someone says, I ain't got time to pray. I'm so busy. I got things I got to do. I know I need to pray, but I got... I got to text the universe. I got to answer all my Facebook. I, you know, I, I've got I've got you know Netflix series. I haven't. I got to get caught up on. Um, you know, I just got things to do. I I, got, I know how to pray, but I ain't got time to pray. That's pride. But humility says, no, I can't make it without the Lord. I need God every day, twenty four seven. Proud people. The, there's a connection between pride and worry. People are always worry, 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 worry. It's connected to pride. Because here's what it, here's, pride says, nobody can carry this better than me. Therefore, I have to worry about it. But hum, humility says, no, God can do a better job with this than me. I'm going to give it to him. But pride says, no, I can't. You know, proud people think that, they, that nobody can do something as good as they can do it, you know. You try. You, you work for someone who's super proud, then the, you know you'll do you'll you, you'll do your work, and they'll come along and they'll make another adjustment right behind you. Just do a little bit better. All right. How many know people like that? Always tweaking, whatever. All right. That, that's okay. Probably getting in trouble here. But anyway, there is. Uh, let me just move on. All right. 
But pride says, I would give it to God, but I can, but he can't take care of this as good as me. So I'm going to carry it. But humble people say, no, I can't carry this, and I'm going to give it to the Lord. Humble people pray. He says, you're casting all your care. That word care there is the word anxiety. If it's anxiety, it's not good for you. Anything that makes you anxious and gives you anxiety is not good for you. The anxiety itself is not good for you. And you've got to give it to the Lord. And he says, if you, anxiety means to be pulled in all different directions. <clears throat> the proud person just worries about it. It doesn't deal with it. But the humble person, you know, just like the humble person girds himself with the towel, and gets down like the Lord Jesus and washes the disciples' feet, the humble person also goes low. Humble people always go low. And say, Lord, I can't, I can't deal with this. I can't carry this. There are a lot of worries, a lot of concerns, Lord. All of this stuff that's going on in our community right now brings a lot of anxiety. But, oh, dear God, I'm going to give it to you, casting all your care upon him. You know, you just give it to the Lord. It's amazing how when you, when you take the burdens that you're carrying and you unload them and you give them to God, it's amazing how... What a, what a relief that is. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, the scripture says, and he, he will sustain you. And, uh, and so, you know, that's what we want to do tonight. That's what we want to do tonight. We want to put on that garment of humility. We want, Sharon, come if you would, the piano. We want to end this thing tonight. I know tonight in this, people listening, there's a lot of, a lot of burdens. There's a lot of, there's a lot of concern. Your future, where am I going to stay at? My job, some of you are out, out of work right now. Some of you are getting paid. You're out of work in your home, but some of you are not getting paid. And, and now it's, it's like, okay, and this thing can eat you up. How long is this going to last? I've got, you know, I'm not getting a paycheck, but my rent's coming due, and the electric's coming due, and the water's coming due, and i still got to get groceries. And, I've, and, I've, and then if I do go back to work, my kids, my kids are at the house, and who's going to watch over my kids? And who's going to take care of them? I mean, they're at home. School's not in. I depend on the school to watch them during the day. And then when I come home at night, and so all of this stuff, anxiety, it can just eat you up and tear you up. But the garment of humility says, I can't carry this, and I'm not going to carry this. So I'm going to humble myself under the hand of God. I'm going to bring it to God. I'm going to give it to him. Here it is, Lord. I can't do it. It says cast. It just it means to literally hurl it. It's to throw it at his feet. And this is an amazing thing. It says, for he careth for you. You know what that means? He careth for you. It means that he cares about every single part of your life. Everything. Anything that causes you anxiety, that pulls you on the inside, he's concerned about it. Everything. Every single little thing. My uh, grandson Levi and and Adley were at the house this afternoon. Uh, this this afternoon, I came in, played with them just for a, a little bit there. Scared them, ran them into the closet and played rah rah rah. Yeah, and then they run into the closet, that kind of thing. And uh, but you know, there there things that bother them to me because I'm older and more mature. You know, are, are very light. It's you know, things that concern them that they get burdened about, you know, that cause them anxiety. On my side, from the side of much older, <laughs> much older, it's like that ain't no big thing. You know how God, but when you love someone, you care about what they care about. And I don't want to see little Levi or my granddaughter, my only granddaughter, I don't want to see them fretting or worried. Or concern. I, I, it bothers me if they're concerned. And guess what? God, whatever you're going through is nothing to God. He's God. But guess what? He cares about it. He cares about what's on your heart. He cares about the things that are agitating you, that are pulling you, that are distracting you. And he says, don't carry it. Pride, I can carry this, or I'm going to carry it. No, don't do that. Give it to me. Let's just bow our heads. So tonight, right there at your seat, right there in your living room, right there if you're in a car watching on a cell phone or whatever. Why don't you unload it? Give it to the Lord. Don't carry it. The Lord doesn't want you to carry it. Cast all that care upon Him. That's an act of humility. God sees prayer as humility. Give it to Him. 
Lord, we want to be, we want to be like you, Jesus, clothed with humility. Lord, you modeled it for us. You came into this earth, you humbled yourself, became a servant. You humbled your, you came to the earth, you humbled yourself, you went to the cross. You served all of humanity. You girded yourself with a towel. You washed your disciples' feet, Lord. You continuously served, 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 served. You didn't come to see what you could get out of the people. You came to, to give to the people. And then you just waited on God's timing. And he is the one who exalted you and has given you a name above every name. And that your name, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that you're Lord. And you showed us how to wait on your timing. Let God exalt. Let God vindicate. Let God bring vengeance. Let God fight the battles. But just to wait. And then, Lord, we're reminded that you got up a great while before day and you prayed. And you prayed in the garden when you were facing the cross. You prayed on the cross. You prayed before ministry. After ministry was over with, you went into the mountain and tarried through the night and prayed. You prayed before. You prayed after. You prayed during. You prayed all the way to the cross. Your last words, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You prayed to the end humbled yourself under the hand of the Father. Lord, we want to do that. We want to be clothed with humility. We want you to be pleased. We want your best in our life. I pray for our people, Lord. I pray you'll bless, Lord, whatever burden, whatever whatever fear, whatever anxiety, whatever it is that's pulling, Lord, any man or any woman, any single mom, Lord, raising children, Lord, any teenager, Lord, who's fretting over this school year and future lord and they haven't lord lived a long time and haven't this is maybe their first big world event that they've seen and lord their hearts are if they understood it they are anxious and they're worried help them lord to pour it out not to carry it but to unload it lord and thank you lord that we can and lord we come right now we just lay it down we lay our burdens down we lay our care down and we thank you lord you said come unto you all their labor and heavy laden, and you'll give us rest. Thank you, Lord, that the place of humility is the place of rest. The place of humility is the place of rest to our soul, Lord. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for caring about us, every little thing about us, every little burden, every little fear. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, and um, I want to encourage you to, to, to reach out to, to someone else. This Look, we're not together. We're not gathering like we would like to, but send someone a text, make a phone call, reach out to someone, uh, uh, of course, pray for one another, but go the, go the extra mile and make a contact. There are a lot of lonely people right now, and a lot of people who... Uh, uh, would be greatly encouraged and you could encourage them. This is the spirit of humility, serving one another. Not, yeah, I'm waiting for someone to call me. No. Call somebody else. Don't worry about that. If God thinks you need a call, he'll have somebody call you. Leave that in the hands of the Lord. And just think about, what can I do to serve other people? And Jesus said, if you'll do that, happy are you if you do these things. If you wash one another's feet, he says, you'll find a place of happiness. You'll find you, you can have a lot of joy in your life, even during this uh, time of lockdown. Thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you, and God willing, we'll see you on Sunday. If you need anything, please please uh, don't hesitate to call the church, call the church offices, call the pastoral staff. We're here to serve you. We love you. Good night. <laughs>